Everyone thinks of diamonds as a lady's best friend, thanks in part to the marketing muscle of the global diamond industry, which has spent millions to promote its precious gems. But there's a whole other universe of gems that are sometimes just as valuable, including sapphires, rubies, and emeralds. One of Elizabeth Taylor's rubies, an eight-carat stone given to her by Richard Burton in the 1960s, recently sold for $4.2 million. So at a time when many investments offer low returns, many wealthy investors are more than happy to fill a bag with precious stones and hopes they'll be worth an even bigger fortune someday. Unlike diamonds, the color gems market is mysterious and poorly understood. Many of the best stones come from places like Tajikistan, Colombia, or Myanmar, where smuggling is rampant and local kingpins resist letting outsiders near the mines. Buyers of colored stones often don't find out where their stones come from, and it's hard to get reliable information on what they're worth. Instead of big companies like De Beers, the colored gems business is still dominated by small-time players and adventurers who trek through jungles and danger zones to negotiate deals for the best specimens. It's hard for buyers to know whether their stones helped fund wars or conflicts. It's also hard for buyers to know whether their stones will appreciate in value over time. Now some investors are trying to change the rules of the game. New companies like Gemfields are investing in large-scale, professional mines, where the stones are easier to track and grade. They're also putting big money into marketing campaigns that could enhance the value of the stones over time, just like diamonds. Many traditional gem hunters doubt companies like Gemfields can turn the industry around. The business is still so wild, with small deposits located in some of the world's most unforgiving places, that it's hard to imagine mass production or a highly organized supply chain ever taking over for gems like rubies. But then again, maybe that's part of what makes the stones so appealing to some people. Treasures that are hard to find and hard to understand always have their own allure. Reporting for WSJ Money, this is Patrick Barta of The Wall Street Journal.